Hi there and welcome to the Arkansas E-Traveler. I'm Landon. On this episode, we are in Chicota, Oklahoma for my first charging visit to an out of beta site for Walmart Energy. So what better way to celebrate such an occasion than to bring in some friends? <laughs> This is EB Texans with some breaking news. This just in, we found Landon from the Arkansas E-Traveler in Shakota, Oklahoma. Well, we're here. What do you say we do a charge comparison with right. our Blazers? Let's get to it. We're gonna charge these things up and see, does the air conditioner really make a difference these days? Plus, we're gonna do a site visit here in Shakota to see what's going down with Walmart Energy. Stick around. Hi there. Before we get into the episode, I needed to add some context to this video. I was moving very quickly to get to Dakota, more importantly to get back home before University of Arkansas game day traffic tied up I-49 in Fayetteville on my way home to Bentonville. So when we got to Dakota, we wanted to do a charge session test. Uh, Don has a newer update to his Blazer EVLT than I have on my Blazer EVRS. And his understanding uh, is that this latest update uh, allows for users to uh, keep the air conditioning on while still charging. And so if you know anything about the GM dip, uh, back in May, GM pushed out an update that was designed to uh, get rid of some of that dip while forfeiting your air conditioning while charging. And so this update that Don has supposedly allows you to use air conditioning while not totally robbing you of your charge rate. So we wanted to test his new firmware update against mine that has not been updated yet. So that's what we're doing here. And I apologize for being so quick and not adding context for this appropriately at the charge site, but uh, hopefully this helps. And I hope that you enjoy the site visit and the episode. Thank you. All right, so Don and Kathy back with us here. Guys, thanks for coming up to Coda. Glad to meet you here. And so we're gonna get these charging sessions started. We're gonna do a comparison here. Don, you've actually got an update on your Blazer model that supposedly helps the uh, AC. Mine does not have it. And so uh, we're gonna see how mine does with no air conditioning at all and how yours does with the air okay. conditioning running. Sound good? Yep. All right, so you've gotten your start. We're going to give you a little bit of a head start because I'm at about 19, 20%. He's at 16, getting ready to pull up to 155 kilowatts on the Alpitronic hyperchargers here at the Supercenter in Chicota, Oklahoma. So once he gets, which will happen pretty quick, to about 19%, then I will join the race. All right, so Don just hit the 19% mark. So we're gonna go ahead and get ours plugged in. Again, the difference here is mine will be completely off. His is running AC with an update that may improve it. And then we're gonna compare the time. So we're gonna swing that around and try to do this one handed. There we go. You can do that when you That's don't have an appendectomy. Part. All right. see Kathy do it. <laughs> And now we will get this underway and see how this charge session goes, comparing charge curves and everything, all the data that we can find. You can see over there, they're plugged in. They've been going for a little bit. Most importantly, you can see the condensation there running the AC. Fairly cool day uh, here in Oklahoma. Um, feels a little humid, I would it say. Is. Um, but pretty atypical for August in this area that we're in the low 80s. So that might help these air conditioners out a little bit, as well as the cooling systems on both the Alpies and the uh, Blazers. All right, so now we're ramping up. We both preconditioned on the way in. 
I have actually charged once today at the 4108 Beta location in Springdale just to get here. So this is my first time paying at a Walmart <laughs> EV charger. So, all right, let's take a site visit and we'll talk with Don and Kathy as well. So tell the viewers at home what you do with your YouTube channel and I, you help me so much. Uh, just kind of <laughs> give us an overview of what you do with uh, the Walmart project. Well, what we do is a lot of permit hunting, mainly me. I tried to show Kathy a little bit, but it gets a little daunting. Same for me. <laughs> so, and a lot of it is just like, oh, this could be something, but then it's nothing because it's like a regular outlet being installed somewhere. But um, and since I'm the driver, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I drive out too and we check what the status of everything is. Yeah, and then we go like uh, to Walmart. One we've been to a lot is the one that just opened in Plano, Supercenter 1117. And we basically do, well, we see, I think that one is six chargers and 12 stalls, 400, up to 400 kilowatt charging. We'll describe what's around that area. Like there's a fuel center there for Murphy's, if I remember, some uh, restaurants across the street, that sort of thing. All right. Well, uh, I know from the bottom of my heart, I can't thank you enough for your coverage in DFW to uh, get my channel going as well, but just providing information that's uh, so useful for EV drivers with this huge rollout Walmart's planning. All right, let's check in on Don and Kathy's session. Don, what do you see so far? Well, we're at 143 kilowatt uh, charge. I just went down to 139. We've gotten 21.2743 kilowatts uh, an hour delivered. Our average so far has been 147. We started at 16, we're at 37%, 314 volts and uh, 440 amps. All right, so we're starting to come down a little bit, about eight and a half minutes into his session. Uh, so remember, they are running their air conditioner. Mine is off, we'll check in in just a moment when mine gets to about nine minutes as well. All right, and so now we're back here on my Blazer EV RS. We're coming off the top, still 132 kilowatts, so that's good. Nothing dipping too hard yet. Uh, about eight and a half minutes as well, and I've delivered in about 21 kilowatt hours as well at the eight and a half minute mark. Uh, remember that Don started a little bit of a lower state of charge than mine. Our states of charge should be similar, but our times are gonna be different. Uh, so we'll check back in once we hit about the 20 minute mark and see uh, how his blazer is handling the air conditioning running and how mine's handling just being off. about 22 minutes into this charge session and on Don's vehicle running the AC, he's begun to dip pretty hard. It's not terrible yet, but remember today is low 80s. It's not too bad, but down to 75 kilowatts. My vehicle should be at a similar state of charge, so let's go see what's going on there. All right, let's see how mine is doing. Not running AC, 62%. So he's a little bit ahead of me. Oh, and look. I've dipped to about the same rate there, 71 kilowatts at 62%. So Don, we might be onto something. The update you have might be helping. Yeah, that, from what I saw on another uh, channel about Silverado EV, it helps a bit, but it doesn't totally resolve the issue. Right, so the context for this is last summer, uh, basically, we had what we had, it, it dipped hard, but then we kind of got this uh, option to update. Well, it really wasn't an option. We all updated and now they kind of take away the air conditioning to keep it cool to avoid such a dramatic GM dip. That's what mine is, but yours has an update to where maybe the air conditioner plays nice now right. and you're able to keep the air conditioning on while charging still. Right, now of course, keep in mind we weren't sitting in the car this whole time, Kathy is now, but we didn't know if there was any message that did appear about that. Because when we were charging out of hyperfuel about maybe two months ago, we got the message about the, uh, you know, AC. Right. So we'll check on that. I won't get the message because mine's off, but we will 
check back in closer to the end of the session and see how this little experiment went and discuss our, uh, or at least my first paid experience at a Walmart charger. One of the things that I did want to mention is that in Oklahoma, we're paying 53 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, that seems a little higher than the 42 cents per kilowatt hour in the Metroplex, obviously because it is higher. But remember in Oklahoma, all taxes are baked into that price. So it uh, works much like gasoline. What you see is what you pay in Oklahoma. All right, so back here, Don, Kathy just got an interesting message. Yeah, it says in there to charge faster, turn off the AC basically. Okay, so that's that new feature. And so uh, we thought maybe it would improve, uh, potentially go away with your update, but that doesn't appear to be the case. This is my charge curve right now. There is a GM dip, but it's at 78 kilowatts now with the vehicle totally off, all right? We're approaching 76% in 30 minutes. So let's go see yours. All right, and so now we come into Don's and you can see that his got all the way down to about 40 kilowatts and just got stuck there. Once Kathy got the message, she turned the vehicle totally off and then it spiked back up a little bit. It just said 62 kilowatts, now it says 54. Uh, so Don, even before this charge is done, I think we can say that this update that you have, it's still recommended that you turn the, the vehicle off and yep. uh, go, go shop in Walmart. Yeah, but it is interesting when you look at my curve versus yours, though. Yeah, uh, but yours, I guess, again, running the air seems and to yours be a detriment. All-wheel drive too, so you don't have yeah. the larger battery pack. No, no, we have, we both have 85 kilowatt yeah. uh, battery packs, so or you know, kilowatt hour battery when packs. When I went in that uh, app right mm -hmm. to uh, record the temps and everything it said our battery pack is like 90. so um there's still something to leaving your gm you know former ultium vehicle alone while you charge it so let's see how this finishes to 80 percent and uh we'll get a move on all right so i am finished here here's a look at my curve i'll have a better picture up in just a moment a couple of the stats went from 19 to 80% in 32 minutes. 32 minutes, 50 seconds, let's call it 33. So GM advertises that should take 40 minutes and now it's taking me 33. So we've shaved off seven minutes uh, for mm -hmm. a, a complete charge here. That's pretty good. Uh, 57 kilowatt hours dispensed. And I think that's about it. The price will be in the app. I will post that later. Let's go check in on Don's as his is still charging. All right, so we finished charging. We had the thing on for the AC for everything but the last 10 minutes. And we're now went from 16 to 79%. Took us almost 40 minutes, 39 minutes and change. Got 65.1070 kilowatts an hour. Um, so here's an interesting stat that I want to show. I read up on mine. Don averaged 100 kilowatts during his uh, charging rate. Mine was 105. So that doesn't <laughs> seem to make a big difference when you look at the numbers, but it turned out to be about seven minutes difference in our charge sessions. So if, if we're busting myths or whatever out here, uh, the new update, it might help a little, but I still say turn off your GM car, go shop, and it'll be done quicker. Right, because why sit in your car anyway in a hot day? Right. You know? Um, and you got a subway here, you got <laughs> restrooms, you can go snack something on the clearance yeah. aisle if you're looking for a deal or something. Like, yeah. uh, it's just, just time your shopping for when you need the charge. Yeah, or if you're on the road, you know, when I was growing you up. You need to stretch your legs. Yeah, when we always went to Walmarts. My grandfather gave me quarters to play the crane machines, right. you know, so. You figure what, every maybe Walmarts. three hours and you get out and stretch, charge for 15, 20 minutes, go on to the next charger. So yeah, I like what Walmart has set up here. Uh, even in Chicota, they're doing a bang up job here with eight stalls, uh, four CCS, four NAX, and the Alpitronic Hyperchargers just taking care of business like they normally do. So. Uh, let's wrap this up. Looks like you still need to keep your air conditioner off when you're charging your GM vehicle. All right, and so we've both charged our cars now to 80% here in Chakota, 53 cents per kilowatt hour flat rate. 
What was your impressions of our little experiment today? Well, I think it proved that the software update that we have compared to the one that you don't have, mm -hmm. it helps a little bit, okay? But you'll still get the message, and I'm not sure when it first appeared in that cycle because we're outside the car and then she went in to cool off yeah. and she saw the message. So it does help, but it doesn't alleviate the issue. Right, and we didn't really expect that. We were just wondering if it would help. And I would say compared to what I've seen in the past, I would say it was modestly helpful, uh, that new update you have that I don't have yet. But obviously right now, uh, you can't argue that the best thing to do if you have to do a full charge is leave your vehicle yep. and just let it do its thing. Just do your shopping, go get some dinner or something, and yeah. come Spe back. Speaking of which, it's almost lunchtime. That subway has my name uh, <laughs> all over it here. So, Don, Kathy, right. thank you so much for coming to Dakota. It was uh, a great time to come down. I know you got some plans around here for Labor Day weekend. And, yeah, what are uh, we doing? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm going to head up uh, back to okay. uh, Bentonville, try not to get caught up in game day traffic in Fayetteville as the Hogs are playing Alabama A&M today oh, cool. or somebody from there. So, uh, yeah, on behalf of Don and Kathy from Evening Texans, please go check out their channel. Uh, I'll have it linked below in the description. They do a great job assisting me and uh, a lot of other people in the DFW Metroplex, they are a true uh, asset to those EV drivers in the Metroplex. So uh, happy trails.